Hi, this is Angela with Parkrose Permaculture. Welcome back for part two of my orchard tour. We are continuing in the second half of the poultry run. Uh, I wanted to make a quick note about um, what the orchard looks like in the poultry run. Uh, this is the first half of the orchard that we covered. Um, so in the poultry run, you can see down in the bottom here, we throw in lots of things for the chickens to scratch and scrounge around on and break down and turn into a really good um, humus for the orchard. One of the downsides of having chickens in your orchard is that it's hard to do real guilds with companion planting. They kill everything. They just scratch and peck everything to death. Um, so you saw the comfrey in the first half of the video. Um, they just destroy everything. So an important aspect of having a uh, poultry run in your orchard is having rotational grazing. So these chickens and ducks have been allowed in this half and they've kind of Everything down here is really well broken down mulch and I have some rhubarb stalks they were scratching and busting down and um, those are the flowering stalks, not the edible part. And um, some prunings, I have some comfrey that I put down in here and they will peck and scratch and turn all that in. And then in about a week, this area will be closed to them and they will, um, this area will be allowed to rest and regenerate and some of the plants that are planted underneath uh, bee balm, I have some young currants, um, lots of herbaceous things will be allowed to regenerate and also a fresh load of wood chip mulch will get put down here. And then a gate will go across here to the duck house and the birds will be kept in this second part of the run that we're going to talk about. The rest of my orchard outside of the chicken run is full of companion plants and very lush and green. Um, but it is important to note that chickens destroy everything. And so you need to think about that when you're planting. Um, I wanted to show this young tree and what happens. That's Violet. Hi, Violet. Um, what happens to young trees in the orchard? So this is a dwarf everbearing mulberry. Mulberry leaves are edible and high in protein and are good chicken food. They don't tend to eat them unless there's not much else left, but um, it's low to the ground and a baby and tempting, and you can see where they just peck the heck out of the leaves. So um, this tomato cage is insufficient. I haven't done much more. See, they've stripped this one down here. Um, hi, hi, Gloria. Okay, they've stripped everything else off of this. Um, because this area is about to get fenced off from them, this plant will have a time to recover, but if they had access to it all year long, um, they could very easily kill this little mulberry. So you want to be careful with young trees in the poultry run that they're very well protected. Um, I also put in a young um, uh, kiwi, hardy kiwi, and I didn't realize they would eat the leaves of that either, and they have packed that clean. Um, okay, so now we're going to move into the second half of the run, which starts here at the edge of the duck house and goes this way. And then... Um, have some bread scraps that I put down for them this morning. Um, if I've squished or have access to squished bread and or stale bread, they'll get that as a treat, um, but it's not their main source of food. So let's start over here, starting with the duck house. So this area will be the second part of the poultry run. Um, and then after they've kind of destroyed this area, it'll get closed off and they'll get put in a third area where we are still scrounging fencing. So we use all free scrounged fencing. So I am dependent on when I can find things on Craigslist for free. Um, one of the things I firmly believe in is that permaculture should be accessible to everyone, especially subsistence communities. And we want to model here um, what that looks like. And so I do do my best to repurpose and reuse and to keep our budget very, very low. Um, when I could spend money on things, I choose not to because... I want our garden to be a demonstration that permaculture is accessible to everyone, not just someone with a huge budget. Um, okay, so uh, I have some hoogle beds down here. Uh, another cautionary tale about having chickens. Uh, the mulch was all the way over the top and dirt, and they have scratched most of it downhill from this hoogle bed. Um, so a lot of the branches are beginning to stick out. Chickens do a really good job of that. Okay, starting here in the corner. I have a black lace elderberry. I took a cutting from my sister's tree, so it's still young. It is more of a ornamental, but the fruit is edible. If we look at the fruit here. Hi, girl, excuse me. Um, so these are just about to flower. They're not flowering yet, but will be soon, and those berries will be edible. Ducks and chickens don't particularly like elderberries, by the way, so they won't eat the fruit. Um, next to it, I have a Desert King fig. This fig tree will easily get 
a 30 feet tall without adequate pruning. Desert Kings are a green fig with a pink inside. They're considered the best fresh eating fig for the Pacific Northwest. They produce one crop of figs per year. Okay. In our climate in Southern California, they'll produce two, but here they produce one. They're very cold hardy. I don't have to cover it or anything in the winter and I get very little dieback. The figs will be quite large. The downside of the Desert King fig is that it is a big tree. You do need to prune it aggressively. The other downside is that the figs are very prone to splitting and their ripening period is very rapid. So they will go from underripe, not sweet, kind of dry, to perfectly ripe, to overripe within a period of about three days. So, um, and when they're overripe, they will split and um, then they'll get ants in them and things like that. So uh, it's a, you have to be on top of the harvest, but it's a pretty, pretty good fig for our climate. Okay, moving on. Here I have two new plants that I planted in one hole to grow as one tree. I planted them far enough apart that I wanted to be able to easily tell which was which. So it'll be a two trunked tree and I can prune um, accordingly to not prune off all of one tree. This is Zisiphus jujuba, the jujube. So when I bought these, the nursery that I bought them from, I no longer um, buy plants from. I've had quite a few problems. And one of the problems with these plants is that they were not cheap. They were $30 per tree. And then when I took them out of their pots, they had almost no root formation. Um, like they were clearly, um, they are grafted varieties, but they were not well rooted. So I was really worried they were gonna die over the winter this winter. Um, but as you can see, they're starting to leaf out and there is life on them. So I have hope for them. Uh, Zisiphus jujuba is also known as the Chinese date. It um, is a thorny semi-suckering tree that should do quite well in our climate. And I really like the fruit. It is good, fresh or dried. Um, as these mature, I'll do more videos on them. They're not much to look at right now. Okay, moving on. This is a quince tree. It is a quince that... I am considering removing because it's not that pretty and I have six other quinces. It is this it, one specimen in this corner is prone to powdery mildew that you can see here. Um, and also um, it is prone to rust, the quince cedar rust. Uh, it's much more affected by both these problems than other specimens in my orchard. So I'm probably going to be removing it. I'm a fan of taking out things that are hard work or disease prone or fussy. I want things that are low effort and high yield. So, okay. Uh, scanning over here. This is one of my favorite apple trees, both for the shape. It's a lovely shape. It's grown quite nicely. This is a dwarf apple tree. This is Ashmead's kernel, which is considered a very fine dessert apple with a complex flavor. It has set loads of fruit this year. It will need to be thinned. It does not have a very strong ability to um, drop its own fruit in June fruit drop. Um, it will keep most of these on the plant and so I'll need to hand thin them. Okay. This is a great apple. Ashmead's kernel is an heirloom variety that um, <sighs> I don't know how to describe it. It's fantastic. Let's just put it that way. It's a fantastic apple, uh, but it can be a little fussy. Um, it doesn't always bear heavily every year. It can be almost an alternate bearing tree. So last year I didn't get a ton off of it. And this year I just have loads. So see, um, a note about apples in the chicken run, they are less prone to pests than apples elsewhere in my orchard, especially a much less coddling moth problem down here in this part of the orchard. I think because the chickens do such a good job of cleaning up any fallen apples that have coddling moths and, um, and maybe interfering with the life cycle. Uh, I am gonna put coddling moth traps out this year anyway, just in case. Okay, this apple tree, oh, let's talk about this one. Oh boy. Okay, this is the first apple tree that I put in. I have lots of regrets didn't know what I was doing. It's seven years old now. I wanted a tall apple tree that would provide shade and that I could walk under because I'm six feet tall. Um, this is a Liberty apple tree. The apples on it are quite good, but look how high it branched. So didn't set off any branches in the bottom. I don't know if that's because the chickens would peck at it, but then I allowed it to branch super high up and I regret that so much. So what I should have done is topped the tree 
right here and um, allow it to branch and form a nice wide shape like the apple I just showed you there. I may come back and chop it back here and that will stimulate it to put out new branches down here. But that's a big rehab project. It would mean several years of not getting apples and also um, it would reduce the shade in this corner. So I haven't done it yet. I keep waffling, but that's ultimately probably what I'm going to do because that's not how you should train an apple tree. That's cautionary tale. Good note about permaculture. It's things are fixable. If you screw up early on, you can fix it. Don't stress. Down here I have a gooseberry. Gooseberries do well here. Um, had lots and lots of currants, but I took several out because I just have too many in the yard. Um, currants propagate very easily and there just were way too many. Uh, so I have some gooseberries. They're thorny. I have a new baby one here. That's a red variety. And the one that I just pointed out is a green variety. They're thorny so the chickens don't bother them as much. Uh, I do put cages around them because they can scratch and damage the roots. Uh, above that I have my Munger black cap raspberry trained here, which is my favorite berry. Also great bee food. Okay, moving on. This apple tree here is new, young apple, and it likes to lean. And so I have propped it up with a little wedge of apricot prunings. Okay, this is a Roxbury russet, also a fantastic apple. I'm a fan of russet apples in general. I have more russets than any other kind. Um, so this is Roxbury russet. It will need quite a bit of thinning. It has set way too many apples for what a small tree it is. If I were to leave all of these on, the apples would one, be too small, but two, as they mature, they would push this branch down quite a bit. It's loaded very heavily on one side and not the other. And part of the reason for that is because it was damaged on one side by the chickens last year. Um, so this is gonna need hand thinning. Great apple though. Okay, moving along here, here's the chicken coop. Chickens. This tree here, excuse me, shrub here, is a silverberry. It's in the genus Eleagnus. It's supposed to get 10 feet tall. This is where it stops, about four feet, five feet. Uh, it just gets wider and floppier. So the silverberry is a nitrogen fixer. That's one of the reasons I put it in. I was told the fruit was really good. It's not as good as the gummy berry. It's astringent and sour. So I don't necessarily recommend it for the fruit. However, um, I mean, if you have the choice between a silverberry and a gummy berry for fruit production, pick a gummy berry. However, um, this gets much bigger and the foliage is evergreen versus the gummy berry. If it's cold enough, it'll drop all its leaves. Um, the shrub flowers and the chickens love to eat the flowers, so I don't get much fruit on it. The fruit production that I do get is on the top where they can't reach. Down low, they eat all the blossoms off. Um, it is a great plant for your poultry run for a number of reasons. Um, one, because the flowers are edible for chickens. Two, because the fruit is edible. And three, they really like to eat the leaves. So um, moving down underneath here, they have pecked off all of the leaves down low where they can reach ducks and chickens, but particularly the chickens. And they've made themselves a little cave under here. And if they get freaked out or scared, um, where if it's a hot sunny day, everybody will come rest underneath here. So it's made a little chicken fort. So it's providing good shelter, it's providing food for them. Um, it's also fixing nitrogen for the trees around it. So again, that's a silverberry. Moving on, we have here my Illinois Everbearing Mulberry. One of my early videos was on this tree and I pruned it very heavily in the fall. You can see it's not um, as dense as it was. It is set with quite a bit of fruit, considering how heavily I pruned it. This tree can get out of control, though, 35 feet. So it requires lots of pruning. So here we go. There is the immature fruit. Um, a note about this tree. Again, I've said this in my other mulberry videos. It's very prone to die back. So when you prune it, give it um, a good extra distance. So normally on a tree, I would prune it here. On a mulberry, if you did that, this bud would die and it would die back to here. So wherever you want to prune it to, give it about a centimeter or maybe two centimeters and prune there, knowing that this area will die back. Same up here, same thing. It would die back past that bud if I had trimmed it right here. Okay. This is a great tree. Really like it. Uh, Again, aggressive pruning, though, to keep it maintained in its size. Okay, last tree down in the chicken run. Uh, this tree right here is actually not a true tree. It is a shrub. 
um, and it looks quite small right now. This is uh, Sambucus nigra subspecies cerulea. It is the native blue elder. It's native in Oregon, Washington, California, and many other places. But I had to order it from Burnt Ridge Nursery. I couldn't find it locally. Um, Burnt Ridge Nursery has been great for me so far. Lots of uh, edible varieties I can't get locally. Uh, cheap prices. Reliable shipping. So this came as a little stick. And I stuck it in. And it got huge. Like 15, 20 feet tall. Very quickly. Um, then all of a sudden I noticed that the branches would just wilt like just completely flop over. And I knew what that was. Um, it's a pest I've never had before, which is the elder borer. And so I cut it back really aggressively. All of this got cut off and down inside the stalks, it was full of grubs, which is the elder borer. So I think it must've come that way from Burnt Ridge because I have several other elderberries and have never had elder borers before. Um, so I cut it back all the way to the ground and because it's a shrub, it is coming up. So it's put up this, I didn't kill it. There's another baby coming up here. Elderberries actually like to be uh, regenerated every few years by having the largest stems removed. So this should come back and be huge with big blossoms that make great fritters and uh, superior tasting elderberries on it. Okay, so this is the view of my chicken run portion of the orchard. I will continue to make videos on other areas of the orchard. This is only a small part. Um, with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen of my, uh, 35 plus fruit trees. So I will continue to, uh, make videos to cover the rest of the orchard. It should be, I think, five parts by the time I'm done. So please check back. Um, if you liked this video, please click like, please subscribe to our channel and please feel free to leave any questions that you have in the comments. Thank you.